seeing more regulation? Do you think they're feeding each other? Or? They're feeding each other. Um, and, and it's actually funny because I just decided to add a, a section to my book about um, high schools okay. and about the idea. Because one of these things I don't want to misrepresent the idea that students are going into higher education understanding what it means to live in a free society with a deep respect for other people's point of view and a deep understanding of, uh, of the principles of local society. Right, or, or, even talking about, or even talking about racial situations. Yeah. Like you said, we can't even bring up certain happenings of history without getting into trouble. Well, you it, can't it, teach history. It, it, and it's funny, because really kind of like, well, it's, I, to my knowledge, I'm the only person who brings up a Buddhist argument for freedom of speech, uh, you know, consistently, which is that basically, you know, life is painful. Um, and if you teach students that uh, basically they have a right not to be offended and they have a right to, to, to be free of emotional pain, um, you are doing them a tremendous disservice. But unfortunately, what, what we're doing for students is we're making them think that anytime something actually challenges you or goes against your beliefs, something, there's an offense, there's something wrong with that. That feeds into an existing dangerous human instinct, in my opinion. I think that the instinct to censor is incredibly powerful. And free speech is an intellectual discipline. It's something that has to be taught. You, you, you have to learn how to actually deal with the fact that that first time you're actually in a debate and someone actually comes up with a point that you hadn't thought of, it's devastating. But get over it. So there like, it is. It, it's the whole thing where it's like we need to be responsible for our own lives and that government can't protect us from speech and, and government can't protect us from getting our feelings hurt. Yeah, and no should they. I mean, like, they, that, or, it, or, it, or, or, or getting a cartoon that, you know, because, like, we really can't be protected against all this because we end up doing ourselves a uh, great injustice. Well, yeah. We it, pay the price. You know, it's one of those things where perfect comfort, you know, then if you want to live in perfect comfort, then democracy may not be for you. Can, uh, can if students see uh, something on campus that uh, violates their rights, are they allowed to contact you for legal help, or, or where would they go to, what would be their first steps in order to take um, like Definitely, kind of, like, it, 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 it's, it, it, it's sad to kind of say this, but I've watched, when, uh, that, that case at University of New Hampshire, one of the reasons why that student got in such trouble was in part because he apologized so sincerely. Um, and it can be very sad that when, when a student does something that, that to, as far as an administrator is concerned, across the line, he, they can turn on him or her like crazy. So when this starts to happen, contact fire right away. It's the, 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 the submit case button right at the top. Um, it, it, there, there are certain things you can do to make sure that you don't actually get in, uh, get in worse trouble. And fire wins the overwhelming majority of our cases. I mean, the um, we don't actually litigate. Uh, we don't we don't directly litigate anything. Um, and at this point, we've won nearly t uh, 200 cases acro across the country. We've, uh, we've with a, schools with a total population of three million, changing policies with a school with a total population of two million, and we're this little tiny group, you know. So definitely, like if you know somebody is getting in trouble, um, have have them contact uh, contact fire. We defend people all across the, the spectrum. I'm I'm very proud of the weird coalitions that fire has always been able to put together. Um, but definitely, yes, uh, the fire.org. There's a submit button at the top, and again, Greg at the uh, at the fire.org. That's a funny one. Um, so uh, I got time for one more question. Is there anybody who hasn't? Oh, did, um, oh I, actually, I thought you were trying to. Well, okay. Um, back. Okay, I was, I was just going to ask. Um, there's been some cases, I think, where s some students in high schools have uh, committed suicide based on Facebook posting yes. and stuff like this. Have you seen some of these cases start to show up on a college level with harassment and Facebook and social well, networks? And the Tyler Cl Clemente case was a really tragic case. This is the one where the guy. Um, videotaped his roommate um, while he was hooking up with uh, with another man and then posted it on the internet and the, and, and, and the student killed himself. Uh, this, this is an absolutely a tragic case, but it was already a crime in the state of New Jersey to do that. If, if you have an expectation of, and you, you have an expectation of privacy in your own room, it doesn't matter if you share it with somebody else. Um, so you violated that, you post it online, that's a crime. And what, what scares me about the bullying aspect is that most of what they actually want to prevent from bullying is actually already illegal. And also, the term bullying itself, it, 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 since nobody, it's like harassment, no, nobody wants to <coughs> say, I support bullying. Um, but really, it's a term that when you say bullying, you're talking about essentially schoolyard stuff. You're talking about K through 8, really. And when we start applying that to people being sort of like disrespectful or mean to each other when they're graduate students, that's just not bullying anymore. That's, that, that's none of the state's business, really. Um, now, of, now, it can become it if it becomes common law harassment or stalking or all these things, again, that are already illegal. But FIRE is really holding its breath right now because, terrifyingly, as far as we're concerned, 
Um, a lot of legislatures are, are, are considering laws that literally go K through grad school. And it's like, no, 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 no. There is a bright line distinction between high school and college. They're, they're, they are not the same thing. We do not rely on kindergarten through fourth grade to be the engine of intellectual innovation and change for our society. We do rely on that for higher education. So there's a big, there, there, and, and, and you shall object to it the most because it's totally infantilizing. Um, because people forget that kind of like, it's not, college students aren't 17 to 21, they're 17 to, to 89. Um, and, and that we do rely on, on, on them to actually come up, with, uh, come up with new ideas. And if they have to actually be hamstrung by some nebulous idea that you can't Say, uh, basically saying that you can't hurt, hurt anyone's feelings is saying that you can't say anything important. And we need to be having important discussions on college campuses. We need to be unafraid of them. We need to be, we need the freedom to be wrong. Because if you can't be wrong, you can never figure out why you, uh, what's actually right. And, I, and I, I feel like the universities have actually really, really lost sight of this in a lot of cases. Um, I, I, I felt bad that I did. Okay, I, so I'm not a graduate student with Russian, Eastern European Institute. Nice.